it keeps giving me this Zoom message. Please ask the host to give you permission. No, Maybe I'm not I mean, the host. I don't know about that. It's You can just record. A, you started the meeting, so you should be able to control that. Right. I'm not sure. Let's see if I go back to the Zoom. If you want, I mean, I can send you my um, my recording. So. Sure. Yeah. Okay. So okay, that works. So, where do we start? Um. So I have this link. I'm gonna. I think I emailed it to you. Yeah. I'll put it in the chat. Um. There we go. Open house party. Eighty eighty three meeting. Um. Yeah. I don't know where to start, but that's where I should start. Uh, let's see. But uh, I gotta sign in though. Okay. Why? How about? Can I just? Uh, you can look at it. Well, somehow it's uh, getting me a, a sign-in thing before it didn't do it. Okay. Let me just make it a public. Yeah. Let's make it public. All settings. No, it says it's public. It does. Yeah. Well, maybe I gotta. No. Oh. Means I can't. I can't. I gotta sign sign up for a new account, though. Is there any other way to view it, or? I am going to copy all of it, mm -hmm. and then. Because it's in the email too. Okay. Oh, yeah. Why don't you just pass uh, paste it into the chat so we can take a look at? There we go. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> so. Um, I guess what I had is for like 2022 respective organization updates. I don't know if you want to go first or me. Yeah, so, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, quick update. I've been working on a CD go home all year up until a build in December. So December 8th, we started a build of two houses. We, we got one uh, pretty much framed up. The second one, just the foundation. We've got a bunch of house modules, but basically those are two two houses that we're finishing now and putting on a market to prove the economic model of the CD home. So this is now not just our uh, builds on site for just education purposes. This is for real clients and developing a, a revenue model. So that's where we're at and that's a very exciting time and look forward to those being finished up. Uh, ideally, our goal right now is March 1st. It's on the market and it's possibly sold. <clears throat> cool. Yeah. Um. For me, uh, last year I was pushing to do some YouTube video content and some podcast stuff. Um, I'm kind of just starting it um, back up again. Um, my I got a promotion at work, um, and it means about the same pay for now while I'm in training, but less uh, less demands on my body, uh, so I have more energy. So that's awesome. Um, I'm working as Where an electrician. Electri electrician. Yes. Did you actually go to tech school for electrician, or? No, I went to school for electrical engineering, um, and uh, I got my power certificate. But things weren't quite panning up. Um, I had some health issues, and my GPA dropped a bit. Um, but I decided I want to do some stuff on my own, mm -hmm. um, and I wanted to kind of do what you were doing mm -hmm. with open source hardware technology. Because I think that's really amazing that you can connect with people internationally via social media and work on similar projects. Mm -hmm. um, and I kind of want, well, I formed my own nonprofit and for profit, Open House Party, Chasses Chassis, and I've been kind of incrementally working on it as I am able to. Um, so I guess for some of the updates for 2022, um, one big one is I got a big piece of machinery for my for profit, um, the professional shredder for the precious plastic equipment. Um, I ran into some issues with that, but it's been resolved. Um, I'm ordered my XL extrusion, XL extruder, as well, and so that's uh, going to be shipped in probably the next couple months or so. I still got to buy some more molds I want to do, um, but what I've already paid for includes the brick mold, um, and he had a new design. And I was kind of curious how it might relate to what you're doing with the house builds, because I know you said you're trying to do some plastic uh, construction. For, um, yeah. So for this is uh, injection molded. It's um, going to be uh, it, yes injected using the Excel shooter into the mold. So yes, injection molding. Yeah. For us, it's about three D printing. So shredding. So shredder is the common common tool, not not the uh, injection part. 
we're just going with 3D printing as a more versatile way to do things. So uh, the goal here is to shred waste plastic and mix it probably with like 30% sawdust to make it kind of wood, wood like filament and print from there. But things like the block, uh, you can do that by extrusion or by printing. For us, it would be by printing. Like I, what we envision right now, immediately what we can do with 3D printing is certain parts that are all, ki all kinds of non-structural or geometric parts that fit within the wall modules. Like for example, if we're doing a plumbing electrical integration, 3D printing holders for PEX fittings so that they would be, imagine for example, we've got a wall module, we still do the four by eight, four by nine modules in real life size, four by nine feet. And then you have a locating piece that you would put somewhere on the module, which would say be annotated, like, okay, put this at coordinate X, Y on the module, and therefore it will be part of the water system because then, then your uh, plumbing fittings go into that. So basically like holders and, ge and geometrical parts, as well as tons of other things like blocking, various, various wood that goes not maybe into the structural part, but all kinds of blocking, and of which there's like... 30% of the lumber is blocking, it's non-structural. So um, with 3D printing, say you take it from, from the waste stream, mix it with some wood, th wood uh, sawdust, things like that, you can talk about actual 30% of actual lumber displacement. And this is not to mention things like PVC for, for uh, plumbing, electrical, all kinds of geometries, trim. I mean, trim is an expensive thing that we can definitely print. Um, and it's non-structural, roofing materials, forms for foundations, you name it. Windows, 3D print your geometries and then put in like double glazing and seal that to have professional grade windows. All kinds of stuff with 3D printing. So that's why you wanna go for the 3D printing part, not the injection molding, because it just gives us the flexibility. Yeah, but the common part, I mean, so the bottom line, I mentioned last year we did the, <clears throat> uh, the proof of concept of the economic model. We're working on it still. But the, the number one thing is to get some kind of a product. So you asked about collaboration in your email. How do we work together? Something that is replicable, that is an important product. Like the bricks, I mean, it could be an important thing. I'm not sure if the injection molding is the route to do it. I personally think that the 3D printing part is more versatile because the same machine can do a bunch of other things and stuff like that. Otherwise, you have to have very specific molds for each thing. And <clears throat> But the common ground is what can we talk about focus the discussion around creating as a product some subsystem or anything that actually makes sense you mentioned now, something i want to interject with you on um being that you're an open source organization um <coughs> i'm sure you're aware that there's a bit of a step in process going from idea to production beta yeah. to stable yeah. production and even in my line of work it's sometimes hard to get people on similar project working on the same project eventually on the same page and synchronize. Um, at work, we have like an SAP system. I probably, I'll only talk limited about that, but I'm trying to do something similar with um, Open Project, mm -hmm. um, and also kind of replicate what you were doing with uh, the wiki part of your website. Yeah. Um, so a big part of documentation, and for you, it's a struggle. It is for most everyone, but if you can, at phases of your development, even if it doesn't pan out production-wise, just showcasing what steps you're progressing with and having it so it's out publicly accessible and easily to access. Um, with Open Project, I still need to learn about versioning um, and assigning work packages. But the, my goal is, as I'm kind of assimilating my own repository that um, acknowledges organizations like yours with Open Source Ecology and Open Building Institute, um, others like WikiHouse, um, I want to acknowledge what developments organizations are doing mm -hmm. and being able to, upon interest, someone to expand further into that and to raise issues or concerns, uh, progressions. But that way, it provides an opportunity for, say, someone else to pick up the baton and progress a bit further, hopefully in the public domain. I know you have a lot on your pl I know you have a lot on your plate, and sometimes it's hard to keep up with the documentation. But if you can make it so it's easy for you to publish some of your main progressions by month um, and allow people to acknowledge what you've done and build off of that as derivatives, like WikiHouse, for example, 
um, I think it'd be easier for someone like me to be like, cool, Martian, this is what you've done for the month, and this relates to what I'm interested in, and this is how I want to kind of push it forward with my own unique interests. So just making it openly organic where it's easier for someone to pick up the baton and progress further with it. Um, so like, for example, you might be working on 3D printing. I know in my case where it's cold, I had learned the hard way that I could produce some stuff with a 3D printer I bought, but until I got in a closed chamber, I wasn't able to successfully make a good product. You, know, you run into some of those issues. But if you can sh like create a, a better user interface for someone to find out what subcategory project you're working on yeah. and it relates to what they're doing, then hopefully you make it in a format so someone else can pick up the baton from anywhere else in the world. Yeah. So that way you don't necessarily have to drive it solely yourself, but it's easier for someone else like myself or others to pick up your public works and take it a bit further as it's more, more in demand in my case or another person's case, if that makes sense. Yeah, of course. I mean, that's a central tr central question of open hardware, and that's that's a huge effort. We do have everything <clears throat> that we record. Um, let me just share the screen. Like, for example, okay, can you enable share screen? Oh, I didn't realize I had a disabled um, share screen. Host disabled participant screen sharing. Maybe I should find a different video chat, so I don't know why you're restricted in all these cases. Yeah, I think um, that's the default. starts with... I'm wondering if Zoom just wants money, or if I, no, I was at long enough. Um, I'll launch the meeting again. What you said, the, I mean, that's the central question. Believe it or not, we all have it. We use the wiki and we use GitLab, GitHub. We use the wiki itself as a repos, and it's actually all tracked under our development templates and CAD repositories. We have all of that. The next question is, how do people understand the development process methodology so that they can actually understand and, and once they see it, they say, oh yeah, that's it, and then, then it can go further. So to me, it's actually the bigger question is one of culture. Um, Engagement. Yeah. You can see um, that. Uh, so, so like, well, but anyway, like what I was going to show you on the screen was the, the CAD master files repository, like you have all the details, you've got the entire structure, you've got the plumbing system, electrical, the PV system, everything. I mean, we, we have everything. I mean, we've got the Yeah, I've seen a lot of it on your website, but sometimes it's been hard to find your most up-to-date, like Lifetrack Progress or their yeah. Press or some of the others. Others could seem a bit scattered. And I yeah. know in my progression um, in documentation for the last couple few years, and to, to date, to bit, my stuff is still a bit scattered. With Open Project, I'm getting a bit more organized and categorized. Um, but also, I'm kind of setting up uh, like Jellyfin for like a video recordings centralized. But I want to have like go-to links people can go to to be updated like what my progression is. And hey, these are my sources. I am sourcing open source open source ecology. I'm sourcing WikiHouse. I'm sourcing this YouTube channel. If people want to search further in my references, that makes sense. Of course. Like in academic publishing, um, you want to have good, healthy, credible, solid references. Um, so you're rely on other people of high cre uh, professional credible value um, and to substantiate your work. Yeah. Um, so similar with open source colleges, I'm sure you're aware of, um, the more you can have people they can defer or delegate to who are better at their niche and are willing to progress and share that public knowledge, it makes it a lot easier for some of your projects, I'm presuming. Of course. Um, like I'm referencing a lot of your works and a lot of WikiHouse as well. Um, Thingiverse, different communities on Thingiverse, um, for like CNC hardware, um, so that's kind of where I want to acknowledge. Like somewhere later in my agenda, is you have your mission focus, and then I have my mission focus. Uh, we're both open source based. Um, you have a much longer track record than I do, um, but I want to also acknowledge like some of the support systems I have, and doing my own developments of interest, but seeing where like some there where there's interlap. Um, yeah. So if like you're doing the house stuff. If I'm able to manufacture, say, the plastic with 3D printers or injection molding um, at a faster rate with some of the equipment, then that might be of use to you. Yeah. Or if you make developments um, in your housing designs, or WikiHouse does, I can refer to your designs and make scale models of stuff as I build up my equipment and materials so I'm not over leveraged in debt. Um, and I'm using the for profit side um, because that way I can account for that debt. The nonprofit, I don't want to do any debt based stuff. Um, and I want to be more community focused on the nonprofit 
engaging with people like you online, mm-hmm. or maybe WikiHouse founders or other people doing similar derivative work. Yeah. Because either way, with WikiHouse or Open Source Ecology CD Cajon, you guys are both have your installation, uh, your electrical work, and your plumbing work, and you own, each have your own libraries or ways of that inner development. And so I want to refer to like both of those organi- your organization, WikiHouse, for example, for some of those finer details um, that you have your own community backing around. And you can acknowledge that with what I'm doing. Um, I really wish I could share your screen, um, but like I said, I have these topics listed. I can't remember if you wanted to pick it up with what you were talking about or. Yeah. Um, no, the documentation part is absolutely right. That's that's has not been figured out, and <clears throat> yeah. And at the end of the day, our latest learning is that the way to make this move forward, just like in, has happened in software, in software with Linux in a, in a couple of years since uh, around 1991, there was a minimum viable product. And for us, we're thinking is the same right now. What's the minimum viable product that can bootstrap some economics and therefore um, make the project grow? I want to touch another basis. Um, I noticed it a bit in your documentation as well, but like in my case, um, I'm wanting to focus on well-being and related to like Maslow's hierarchy of needs, and one of them being housing is like kind of a more base need. Um, and so I'm trying to acknowledge open source projects kind of based on that core base level of the Maslow's hierarchy. Mm-hmm. And so people can get around like with affordable housing for sure. Um, and maybe eventually, if you get got big enough, maybe you can look into something with utilities or repairs of say I don't know like a like urban development or just like so if you use like open source hardware designs for me like basic utility type needs, whether it be plumbing, toilet stuff, or whether it be like some electrical stuff like you've kind of been doing to some degree, but just where people can pick up your designs for public works um, and improve that base utility as far as like with the household and well-being and other categories. But we're focused more so on the hardware of uh, um, intel- uh, database intellectual property of sorts. Um, But kind of just acknowledge that Maslow's hierarchy of needs, because if you can do things that are of service to what people's core base needs are in a better way, then more people I feel are are willing to engage with, oh, this is really cool. Like you're saying I can build like a scale model house and I could eventually build up to a full scale house. Like I don't know if I want to do that myself, but if you get to like like a shed scale stuff, then like, yeah, like I'd be willing to pay for that. That's exactly the reason the basic hierarchy of needs is exactly the reason why we shifted fully to the CD home because it's a number one cost in anyone's life. So that's that's the biggest impact that we can have. And then it also builds upon the open source machines, the 3D printing and ecological stuff and everything, the, the whole product ecology of everything. And something else I've learned is like with open source projects, sometimes there's another organization or company that publishes their works um, that might be a bit better performing. And with like an open project, um, I haven't fully utilized versioning. Um, but for example, I like to version like um, like the developments of your CD go home. I also like to version some of the different models of WikiHouse. And with like my own program, like kind of encapsulate those two in my own derivatives, but acknowledge some of those upgrades every so many years. Um, whether it be housing, or whether it be CNC machining equipment, or 3D printers, you and I have a preference towards the open source domain of hardware. And so if we can acknowledge some of those public developments that are creating a new standard, mm-hmm. like it would be better to refer to those better standards. Um, with the CMC example, I haven't fully put together my Lowrider CMC. And since then, they have a Lowrider 2 for V1 engineering. And now they have a Lowrider 3. Each time, it keeps getting better and better for like a full upgrade. And I don't have to reinvent the wheel. I can just defer to another company or organization that focuses on that niche. And they just so happen to have things open source. So it's maybe. It's like, a, well, definitely acknowledging uh, people you can defer to who are doing their own unique niche that complements what you're doing. Yeah, so you don't have so. to do everything, but you can be like, no, this guy I know overseas, he's really good at this, and we can utilize this in the CD home design. Or this guy here, um, he needs to make a living, and he's really in part with what we're doing. He can help us with a lot of marketing, but he doesn't have to work at our location. He can work remotely, and that sort of work. Mm-hmm. So make things makes things more convenient for people to better help themselves, but further develop your open source progression yeah. of things being in the public domain. Regarding the prior art, the single, perhaps most important page is the genealogies page. So on that, which I put it into the chat, is if you click on any genealogy, like for example, for the 3D printer, you'll have like 30 versions of the printer that we already did. So you can trace 
every single development, everything is described. Um, and you can say, okay, this is what we did in version one and two, we did this and three and so forth. And, and you kind of have to piece it together. But the point is uh, all the data that we have is, or just as much as we can is up there, pictures and everything else. Now, a whole new layer could be that documentation and versioning and all that layer, which is based on, here's the core data set. Now you can organize it as, as you want. And that, that platform is yet to be developed. OK. That's something I'd be interested in doing with uh, one of my colleagues yeah. um, as I'm kind of doing my own scale model house builds. Um, I don't want to over, le over leverage my for profit um, with the debt. I want to have my equipment kind of pay for itself over time. But just some kind of passion project for me is acknowledging like the work that you're doing and how I can utilize that to build like a scale model of your CD go home or the WikiHouse model uh, models. Mm -hmm. I've so far made uh, models of the WikiHouse, a dog house size and a bird house size for cost reasons. I'm trying to do a shed scale model. And a full scale model I have the designs for, but yeah. it's been a little challenging to find um, a manufacturer because um, they have a certain standard of engineering drawings that they demand. Um, and so right now I'm just waiting to hear back from a community member online to that I could pay more for him to do some further design work to meet these en engineering standards for production that the production people want. Are you using um, FreeCAD? Um, I am trying to utilize FreeCAD. Um, well, I'm keeping things in the DXF files. So when I mm -hmm. paid um, a guy from Europe, um, he kept things as a DXF file. But a lot of the engineers I've gone to are the manufacturers. Um, they want specific engineering drawings. And so each time I scale the models up, for say, example, WikiHouse, um, the interlocking mechanisms of WikiHouse is based off a certain thickness of material. And so each time I've gone up in a standard, it's been from, like, say, uh, well, 1 16th, I think, was the birdhouse. Uh, 1 8th has been like the doghouse scale. And then I'm do going all the way to a half inch thickness for the shed. And then the full scale is 3 quarter inch thickness. So when I jump from that 8th uh, to half inch, um, I had to quadruple the thickness and the dimensions. And so um, I have paid someone to provide the DXF files now. Um, Unfortunately, the manufacturers also want engineering drawings to go with that, which um, does not meet their st what WikiHouse has does not meet their standards. So I need to pay him to um, or my designer uh, to take each panel. So there's like 40 some sheets of like plywood designs that are modified to fit for that scale production. Um, so I need him to take the DXF files and um, provide the schematic of cutting drawings that they want. And it, they have different um, CAD file systems. Um, so the challenge is like he has to go through the process of either utilizing that advanced techno software technology, the going proprietary version, to provide that uh, schematic or layout drawing that they want. Um, but ideally, I still prefer to have things accessible in FreeCAD. So some of the designs might be modified in a professional grade piece of machine uh, software to manufacture the design schematics. Um, to whatever pre preferences, but I'm really trying to push to keep things in like a free ad compatible well, um, design format. My suggestion is to invest that money into those workbenches within FreeCAD. So, for example, the way we did the CEB press, we have the model in FreeCAD and then we simply export the DXFs and you can scale things up and down in FreeCAD. So, I would suggest that because that way you can get universal par participation across the globe without expensive software. Now, the second part is uh, for the the workbench idea within FreeCAD, there's already a workbench that, for example, does like sheet metal, so you can it can export you the DXFs for sheet metal cutting and things like that. If we invest if you in could them, chat, yeah. send me a message of uh, those workbenches. I like to take note of those workbenches. Okay, like sheet metal workbench. Um, I haven't looked at it. In, I don't know if it's under development, but I know it was for for example workbench FreeCAD. <clears throat> okay, there's, for example, one from uh, 2020, so take a look at this one. Um, but the deal is, and that's what we're, maybe if you talk about a point of collaboration, there's Sweet Home 3D, which is widely accessible, and then there's FreeCAD. In FreeCAD, 
We already have done things like dedicated workbenches where you can design things. So you drag, you basically click on a button, okay, draw the frame, draw whatever, like for the 3D printer. We did that already. We have a very basic version of that. So use the advantage of FreeCAD, which allows you to do that openly and then change those designs and, and have an easy user interface that anyone in the world can use. I would really suggest doing that because that way you're investing for everybody, not some people who have the software. Right. Um... It's just like the schematic designs that the production people want um, had to meet a certain uh, thresh, uh, certain standard, and I was trying to defer to my designer, um, who's part of the WikiHouse community. Um, I'm not sure which software he is using at the moment, um, but I've just kind of been deferring to him because he was willing to take on the project, and he was already doing his own business production of the full scale model, mm -hmm. um, which he was actually kind of arguing with the, some of the other manufacturers because like no all you need is a DXF file and just to you to let put it into machine code um, but they want more specific engineering uh, dimensions which are different for the scale model so it requires a bit more um, annotation work for each like scale from uh, I don't know if you're aware minutes. of this but FreeCAD has a full BIM integration building information modeling integration in fact FreeCAD is some of the best practice in the ability to open uh, the universal BIM format, building information modeling. So I would actually strongly suggest uh, going, bypassing all these discussions, going to developing FreeCAD uh, for those capacities. I mean, we're, we're doing that, um, definitely working with the FreeCAD. Let me, sh let me send you a link okay. to the um, one about I'm gonna add and architecture. I'm going to tinker around with this in my free time, but sometimes I don't necessarily always have enough free time to do a full development of this. So I myself also prefer to defer to someone else um, to maybe provide like a pre presentation or just something to expand upon what their knowledge is. So if you have any recommendations for experts, <laughs> um, I don't know if uh, Jan or one of the guys you had at the vehicle CAD uh, workshop you did, I think he was pretty well versed in free CAD. Um, and then there's some other names I think I've seen who are like big developers with FreeCAD, but it would be worth it for me just to pay some expert in that area of FreeCAD specialist um, to do the work, but also keep in the public domain and publish their work. And that's something I'd be willing to fund them for as like a public kind of invoice type thing. Um, Cause that way it would help me get up to speed. It would provide some public knowledge on that it also kind of advanced the workspace field. So that's something I will be willing to put money down because it's you know how it is. Sometimes you got to weigh with like time and money of sorts. And so like I'd like to think about with that myself, but I feel like it would be much more quickly up to speed um, if I could pay like an expert to do some of that development, and then I could refer it later with some own my own derivatives. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um... So if any names come to mind, I, I would yeah, appreciate it. Yeah, definitely. I mean, we'll just look at, okay, let me send you this this page and look at any names referenced. Immediately come to mind people like Yorick, uh, one of the founders. Yes. Uh, there's, um, forget who some of the Neil other Park. names are. Um, Duncan, Malt, Yorick, Re Regis, Ryan, and opening detail. There's people. Okay, so some of those are later. familiar names. Um, yeah. Here, take a look at this page um, and look at that page also regarding other means to because one of the big deals is how do you generate all the architecture documents for um, for submitting to a building department if that's what you're doing and um, I was actually submitting it to a manufacturer not a building department um, for the wiki house stuff mm -hmm. um, yeah. I guess I could consider consider building department, but I've kind of just been going at it as I've had the funds. Um, mm -hmm. That's something I'd be willing to do, like kind of like a marketing campaign to do. Like if I can get some funding, I'd find some local people mm -hmm. or pay someone internationally and like kind of carry that baton forward of sorts. Yeah, like so Europe has done the extraction of, of DXF cutting panels from, from FreeCAD models. You know that? I did not know that. Okay, take a look at that page, the architecture documents. There's an example um, there which shows how he's got a 3D model, and then he's actually getting the 2x, uh, two-dimensional DXFs out of that. 
So if you just scroll through that after we after we talk, uh, take okay. a look at that page. It's a good page because it is a very so good page. Really good resources there. The, as far as BIM goes, FreeCAD is up there in the echelon. Yes. Cool. Yep. I see his name. York Duncan Moltz. Mm -hmm. Cool. You got to make sure I yeah. say well. I'm not recording. The, I want to save all this chat stuff. Um, actually, if you save it, then hopefully you can I just am, submit it. Oh, uh, yeah. I'm uh, recording this so you can also... Uh, I'm going to try to find my mega um, server link. If you could maybe upload it to that link. That way, it's like a company and it should be a faster upload speed. Um, but anyway, just if you want to look at that agenda and see what's next, I'm trying to open up the mega file. Mm -hmm. Mega six. Okay. Um, I'm I'm actually recording some of this, and I'll put this on a wiki page and all that, and um, copy and paste all these links here. For the the C home with the current model, we're doing a really complete final model that we will have. I mean, we have one already that's pretty much a uh, version that was valid until like December, and in December we decided to change from a thousand square feet to thirteen hundred square feet because there was so much more interest in thirteen hundred square feet. So we're migrating the, from the. I mean, the thousand square foot is still a core ma module. Which you can do, for example, you can do a 2,000 square foot with two of those modules next to each other. Uh, but the 1,300 for the sing single house is very important. Like, for example, in town, basically people told us if you do 1,000, you're not going to sell it. If you do 1,300, you are going to sell it. <laughs> I mean, exactly. And it's like, okay, uh, we'll listen to that. Um, yes. So <clears throat> that's uh, regarding the final the scale models, I could see a great... Uh, I mean, enterprise or side project or educational thing where people can actually buy or make these kits to practice building them, you know, like, right. like you would do in real life. Uh, so what's, what's next? Um, Sorry, I'm still trying to find a, get a link to share with you. Making sure it's not uh, any any economic modeling. Are you doing any economic mo modeling of what what viable financial models look like? Um, I have not gotten to that point yet. I've kind of just been um, winging it, trying to get production, mm -hmm. and then showcasing marketing recordings, kind of like this. Or what's really cool is when people see like the laser cutting or CNC cutting. Mm -hmm. um, the more marketing I can do like this, where I record it and I publish it on the YouTube. Um, or just engage with people on the online communities, um, the better. Mm -hmm. And I, what I want to do is once I can build up an audience of engagement, then I can be, get feedback and be like, hey, this is what I'm doing with this repository, these housing design models I'm developing further, and this actual scale model production. If mm -hmm. you guys are interested in me talking about how to produce this stuff, how to finance it with like a Roth IRA, or leverage a 401k loan to finance some of this stuff, or something relevant to affordable housing development, um, then consider like financing me, me or promoting one of my workshops. And then if I raise enough funds, then I'll do a production run. Yeah. And on the nonprofit side, I only care that I meet expenses. Um, same uh, similar with the for-profit side is that if uh, I like say with recycling plastic or other materials with the equipment, if I can get to a point where I can like uh, pay off the equipment, then that's awesome for me. Because um, that way, with the for-profit, I can manufacture like my own home estate. Um, with the non-profit, like, um, as long as I'm building up my repository and I'm acknowledging like uh, insecurities or just stuff that I want to see developed further um, with my time, then that gives me a sense of fulfill fulfillment. And if I'm able to engage with people like you or other people 
with the online international community who mm-hmm. I just resonate and get along well with. And for me, that's I find meaning in that, and I find fulfillment, and uh, yep. it brings me a better peace of mind. Um, oh, yeah. um, so with the workshops, I, I that's where I really want to put myself online, like with this, um, engage, you know, like what I'm doing, and just to find interest and get that feedback to see, hey, is people are people willing to like finance me or promote what I'm doing as like a public works? Mm-hmm. And if things become really take off on the for-profit side with my time, I could do maybe some more customized work with either the housing side of stuff mm-hmm. or else with the uh, chassis, yeah. chassis, the house chassis, car chassis type stuff, toy model based stuff. But the for-profit is where I really want to do scale model production and build up. Um, it'd be cool on the for-profit side to, for example, to manufacture some CNC machinery or like a laser saw, laser duo uh, equipment. That stuff's, that's, uh, that's, um, part of the creative commons because for the laser cutter for example um right now i'm trying to finance a truck but if i can like say uh manufacture a laser cutter i could manufacture maybe two of those i could keep one of them but i could sell like the other one for profit and i could also develop further documentation on how to actually manufacture it yourself of course it's an open source project Mm -hmm. but that's a bit more money uh privately focused because it's a bit more capital intensive and there's that risk for me at this point Mm -hmm. whereas a nonprofit, at so far I'm kind of mirroring what you and WikiHouse are doing um, and finding some things with financing and other public books and create my own kind of cookie cutter collection of like how to build or manufacture, create your own affordable housing and the different routes you can take. Because some take cases, it's better to build. In other cases, it's just better to buy what's on market. But I do notice that if you, well, obviously if you buy an old house, you're going to have all these issues you have to finance and pay for. So it's easier for me to kind of build things up with the data side or the documentation and on the for-profit side, if I can recycle materials and build up my own capital, that's stuff that I can more so keep with like tax write-offs and capital expenditures. So when I sell stuff, like I get to write off like the tax write-off. So I'm keeping the, the material into a new usable form as CNC machinery or building my own home estate in contrast with the depreciation of U.S. currency and dollars and stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, trying to think, but yeah, I... I need to look at more of uh, some of this stuff you're sending me. Um, yeah, for see, I sent you the last link is the Seeker Home V2. In the info box on the right hand side, it, it talks about that's our model that was like our proof of concept for the, the technology. And the Seeker Home 4 is the actual first production model out in the real world. Uh, so there's a link to the Seeker Home 4 there as well. And I mean, you know, it's a hyperlinked spreadsheet of content. I mean, there's thousands of pages on, under that. So if you talk about right. documentation, go ahead. <laughs> well, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to encapsulate projects. Um, so, for example, like I'm trying. Well, I think I did already kind of take a mirror of or a copy or a clone of what you got so far with mm-hmm. your repository at one point in time. Uh, but I want to acknowledge that in like open source ecology repository. And then over time, I want to get more familiar with, like, what projects you've done so far, which ones have, like, high utility for, like, making scale model houses. Um, I know you've done the brick to an extent, but it didn't meet your production expectations in some ways. Um, But then there's also 3D printing and injection molding. And so for me, I'm kind of trying to experiment and see which ones have the highest utility um, once manufactured or ease of, like, assembling. And then just acknowledging, like, this one's one that I find useful or relevant. Or, for example, like, with V1 Engineering, he has MPCNC and uh, Lowrider CNC. And, like, this is the machine I'm using. And then this is the new version of that. And um, acknowledging what um, improvements there are, whether it be of uh, that same company organization or product. Or, um, like, even with uh, your organization, um, you guys have your modularity and expandability mm-hmm. and so the documentation. WikiHouse has their kind of own way of doing things. And there's parts of things I like about WikiHouse a lot better, and there's parts of things I like about your organization a lot better. And so just acknowledging more so that your unique strengths in each case and where so there might be some complementary work. Mm-hmm. Um, for your example, I think you have maybe some better documentation with the modules with the electrical uh, setup and the plumbing systems. Um, oh, you muted me.
okay, I'm back. Yeah. And I think I claimed the host status. Yes, I did. So I'm going to record right now. This meeting is being okay, recorded. Yep. I can't hear you yet. You're on mute. How about now? Awesome. And I'm recording this time. Wow. I don't have our I don't have our chat conversation. Hopefully you got that. Yeah. I've got it on. Awesome. I didn't realize I had to click the ho claim host position. Okay. So as I was saying, like um, WikiHouse, I really um, before you had your up to date documentation, which I still have to get more familiar with, because um, I know you guys are still doing a bit of development for ease of like getting up to speed. With WikiHouse, I really appreciated their manufacturing files. It was easy access and utilizing right away. Um, with yours, you've been developing your FreeCAD stuff, but you have your library modules pretty well set. WikiHouse was having some trouble getting their libraries two years ago, one year ago. Um, but I don't, I'm not as familiar with their plumbing and uh, electrical layout. Um, I'm going to plug in my laptop. So anyways, like, um, and actually, I guess, since I'm focusing on your organization with Open Source Ecology, I'd really like to get more up to date with like your libraries with the housing, um, with electrical work and the plumbing, um, and you how. Share the screen. Can you let me share the screen? The screen I can walk you through it. Uh, let's see. There's the chat. Um, share screen. Um, or we know that's sharing my screen. I'm not sure how I let you share your own it's screen. Probably a a hamburger menu next to share screen or something or more. Um, uh, multiple participants can share simultaneously. There we go. All right, got it. So, so if you look at this, <clears throat> uh, the last complete documentation was under C um, <clears throat> 2. Now, I'll just walk you through how you can find it on the wiki. So the page called Gene Genealogies will take you to everything that we've done for the last 15 years. Microhouse is the way we started this project here, so we've done a bunch of stuff on that, starting with the Earthback HUD, Cordwood, Original Workshop, blah, 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 Microhouses, Seed Homes, <laughs> up to Seed Home 4. Now, Seed Home 2 is the most uh, most well-documented one, and if you, for example, look at the CAD, you'll see complete part libraries, like there's master files, entire, I mean, this is uh, like about years of work in this single file right there. I'm going to stop you right there, yeah. but there was, like, for my YouTube videos, like, I'd be willing to, like, kind of explore, like, your libraries and just as I utilize them for some scale model production, yeah. at some point I would like to try to 3D print them with my 3D printers or have them manufactured. I'm not sure which route is... I think you were saying you preferred 3D printing, but just I want to kind of walk through the process on my own at some point as far as the developments you're doing as well as with what I'm currently doing with WikiHouse. Um, and acknowledge the developments you're doing because mm -hmm. that's something I like to replicate myself yes. in my own program. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, to, to continue, continue uh, let's see if we can get you down that road. So this is the seed home two, and now this is linked to the completion status. There, it was built and under testing. Seed home four is the next one. So then, once again, you got things like the CAD, where, where a lot of this CAD is pretty much taken forward from the last last versions. Mm -hmm. But now if you talk about, okay, here's the water system or plumbing, I mean, these are exhaustive files. It's pretty much exhaustive detail. So you can actually look at the working doc for each of those. Like the working doc, that will take you through like hundreds of pages of detail of exactly what we've done in a modular way. And if you can combine, like some of the very important stuff is things like these visual bills of materials where these things are, for example, um, all hyperlinked in this working doc uh, to, awesome. to show you the actual parts and all that. So you can correlate the, the, the diagrams, the BOMs, which are clickable, and CAD completely to get yourself a picture of what the whole thing looks like. So that's, for example, for the plumbing. Uh, similar goes for the water, and then, for example, for electrical, man, this is exhaustive detail too, like this doc here, right here. Uh, I mean, that's going to be like hundreds of pages, but once again, you have exhaustive breakdown down to every single box. You know, you got your, you know, your PV design. Uh, you got things like. I'm gonna slow you down, I mean, but a big thing I want to do with like my own program is I want to encapsulate like what you're doing, because I can get a bit of overwhelm when there's just so much information, good information, but a lot of information. And if I can like say one episode a week, go like, okay, today I'm talking about this cool organization, open source ecology and their building modules, 
I could spend probably a whole video talking about your genealogy and contrasting it with what I'm trying to do with versioning and just encapsulating it because it's very easy to be overblown with all the information. <clears throat> but if I can just focus on a small encapsulated piece of it, promote it online, engage with people, then maybe someone like knows a home builder or this or that, or people can kind yeah. of just talk and discuss about it. Yeah, so exactly. they're going to do their own stuff that's related. Yeah. And so the next week I can post a bit more in detail like, okay, now there's these subcategories of your electrical work and your plumbing and what I like about it, how it contrasts with WikiHouse, another nonprofit. And then someone chimes in like, oh yeah, like we, we took, we talk, uh, saw your video and we actually did our own thing with this plumbing. Like you should be doing this and that. I'm like, okay, that's cool. Yeah. And mm -hmm. yeah, that totally makes sense. And like, actually that's better than what WikiHouse currently has. So I like how WikiHouse has it easy for production, but open source ecology, ecology has this really good documentation with plumbing, and these plumbers seem to be really able to expand on it further, whereas that's kind of past my knowledge base, but someone else can kind of pick up the pieces and make it more relevant, and I can learn from them and re-encapsulate it, synergize back into the project. Yep, exactly. Okay, I'm going to let you go back to talking. Sorry. Exactly, that's, that's the process. Cause, uh, cause so, I, I'm gonna, so I'm going to chime in again. I just know for myself and for other people, we can get easily overblown, but if you can hold on to a chunk of it, the other people can further expand on references. It just makes encapsulation easier to digest. Yeah, of course. Okay. Of course. So, so how do you find the, the latest work on the project, then? This is your pop quiz. If you are you know, you right now, okay, yeah, okay. I, I have hyperlinked to your recent Good. changes wiki page. All right. Um, I keep... I try to stay up to date on that, but yeah. I have not expanded upon your genealogy, which I'm going to explore later okay. and contrast it. And even though you can have a whole session on each of these projects, which each of these projects is like a decade of work in it. So, yeah. um, Microhouse, so, so la last, last was, and you can see this, the last thing, latest on top, uh, CD Go Home 4. So, so the, what I would suggest is you go to the, the first place you click is on the CAD, because that's the ultimate source of truth. It's like, okay, this is yeah. actually what is designed. Uh, so the master files are the, the best place to go to, like um, master files. And for, so here was the electrical that I was uh, referring you to. And in this working doc, you've got um, a lot of the detail. But for example, you know, like down to every single box being explicitly listed and, and mapped out. Like here's all the circuits mapped out completely. Um, Here's like the whole first floor with all the boxes and, and outlets and things and lights. I'm not sure if you're sharing your screen, but I don't ah. see your screen here. Oh, sorry about that. Okay, I'm just trying to follow along on my... Okay. Right, so electrical, I took you to this page where it's like every single box, for example, for the first floor is delineated here. Uh, so there's excruciating technical detail of how everything is wired for the entire thing. So you can study this for a week and actually understand the whole system if you didn't know anything like we're literally listing every single box and where it goes and it's also fully available within the CAD model so if you download this right here this is on GitLab you'll see every single one of those boxes you can correlate it to the reality you can correlate it to the, the BOMs. I'd like to make an interjection. Um, at work I work at Conagra Brands um, I don't want to go too far into detail, but they use PLC systems. And I was like, oh, you guys know there's like this cool open source technology? And I refer to like open PLCs just as kind of a reference base, which is a bit diff quite a bit different compared to industrial standards. Um, but I wanted to see what utility there might be with open PLC as far as with open forum type stuff. So where I'm of interest is if I were to take, say, um, your modules with electrical electrical modules and also expand upon your building modules. If I were to say make a scale model of your household, um, it'd be kind of cool to do one house module kit for like the bathroom, one module house kit for um, the kitchen, and kind of see what work you have with there, and contrast it with maybe some open PLC designs, um, and just kind of play around with that. I don't have to go too far into detail with it, but just kind of play around with it and see what interest I gain with uh, the online audience and community, if that mm -hmm. makes sense. But that's something I'd be very intrigued by because I'd be getting more familiar with PLC systems, the open source community-based one, which is a bit different than industrial grade, but still like it creates an open platform or open source of development to expand upon both complementary, synergistically and complementary with what you're doing with open source ecology. But I'm trying to kind of 
intermodulate with my own open house party program, but also with what I'm kind of doing at work. Um, mm -hmm. But, you know, just kind of create a few points of contact to expand with other communities, um, mm -hmm. common platform technologies. Yeah. And I'll let you have the talking again. Yeah. Um, open the PLC, just a technical question. What hardware can it run on? From what I, I just viewed this a few days ago, it seemed like it was an Arduino-based type of module, mm -hmm. so some Raspberry Pis and some other specialized hardware equipment. I have not, I am not an expert. I just thought, was, oh, I know about open source technology, and I just try to download it. And of course, being the corporate system, I could download it, which my coworkers were surprised about. Once I executed on Windows, uh, corporate policy is like, no, this cannot happen. So it like automatically rejected me from opening it. Um, so my experience, I'm going to say, is very limited. It's like two days worth. So I'm, I, I don't have much knowledge. I just have some enthusiasm as far as exploring it and seeing what standards are available to work with. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it does run on Arduino. Just looked it up. Yeah, cool. So uh, regarding the documentation for what we have on... Uh, Can you screen share your uh, computer again? Uh, say what? Can you screen share your computer again? Right. So I can follow along with you? Well... Regarding the the documentation which you said you can find you can you can get to the CD Home 4 the CAD uh, All the specific master files Electrical here, so taking you to the electrical you can I mean basically uh, Any of these have a working doc and uh, then the corresponding CAD file so you can go through that In quite a bit of detail like for example here the electrical design You'll see the entire house with positionally correct outlets and everything so you can actually when you um, when you 3D print, you can actually, right now we don't have the, well, we do have a model where we do have the boxes and the structure in the same house and all that. So you can get into things like, oh, here's an actual model with everything, including the water fittings and, and plumbing fittings and electrical and all the whole MEP, mechanical electrical plumbing building built into it. And for us, the, the thing is with the larger printers, we did prototype, um, just got early stages of prototyping on a, uh, eight by eight foot print area 3D printer, so awesome. you can actually do the the actual whole full modules. Now, short of that, you can print a lot of very useful things with just very very small. I printers. want to interject with you. Um, have you found the use of enclosures useful? Or are you able to do a lot of this stuff without no, enclosure? Without an enclosure, you're you're useless. Uh, you have to have okay. heated chambers and high temperature printing. So that's an assumption yeah. here. Okay, uh, and that's. Um, some of the developments, if we're going to roll out this in prime time, like for example, printing with polyethylene, you can do that in an enclosed chamber, not not without, or any anything of like that. Even ABS and PVC, perhaps, where you'll just get better quality, and as that's just a prerequisite, and that will be part of the development path for us to do the shredder, do the filament maker, so we actually make the filament part, and then you have the high temperature chambers. Uh, which I do want to, like technically speaking, you should take a look at the high temperature uh, printer on our wiki uh, because we've got a patent free design that's pretty robust and it's very easy to build. So uh, that's something that we've yet to prototype, but uh, we do have a good, very good concept design on that. I'm going to interject again. If you could take notes of things you'd like to like kind of show off with what you've been doing, what you've been doing in the past year, when I'm doing my YouTube series, I'd really like to refer to this interview and some of the cool highlights you have. Yeah, and I'd so like to explore in some of like the 3D printer, for example, because with my equipment, I have my professional grade uh, shredding machine, and so I'm starting to get all this filament. And I've got a few 3D printers that aren't fully utilized, and a couple of them I wanted to utilize to build some open source 3D printers. I know you have your professional one that's more out of metal. I can't remember if your basic one is a bit more rep rep type, but you can replicate with another 3D printer. But as I have this material sourced eventually, or compiled, and I can produce with it, I like to manufacture maybe like one of your base printers of sorts, or most of the parts for it. Right. Take a look at this link in the chat. That's the high temperature heated enclosure concept, because that hasn't been built, just some CAD and, and work like that. So that's an important page to study. I won't get into that much more okay. detail. There's another page called, um, let's see, Open Source sh Shredder. <laughs> Now this gets into the the mm, no open something space. I'm going to do as well is with my server is I want to have a repository of like 
a safe open source ecology repository and have versions of like, this is the repo at 2010, this is the repo around 2020 time, or this past year, 2022. Um, but then also have my own um, mirroring repository uh, where I take some of your works that I really like and I do my own derivatives of it, acknowledging your core base work and where I'm expanding or um, modifying it. And then maybe sharing it, well, and keep it in the public domain, but sharing it with you be like, hey, Martian, like, just so you know, this is like my own repository referencing your works, and this is where I'm making my own advancements on. So similar to like a GitHub structure, um, you have your core base branch, but then I can do a derivative work of it of my own, but then I can resync it to what you're doing, saying, hey, if you'd like, I'm committing this to my own repository. If you find it useful, then you can add it to your own repository. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Be yeah, because I'm I know like as your own organization, you have works that are encompassing what you do with your organization. But whenever you find something useful from a company or another nonprofit organization, I'm sure like with Precious Plastic or WikiHouse or FreeCAD, you refer to it and reincorporate yeah. into what you're doing. But you have that core work that is your own entity, but that own like um one that's more of like a shareable or acknowledging what's in the public domain and kind of hosting that. So that's what I'm trying to do kind of with my server is acknowledging versions of updated repositories of other people, but then also showcasing where I'm mirroring that repository and doing my own derivatives. That yeah. way it allows for more of an organic um, exchange of developments. Yeah, exactly. And I mean, you're, you're saying the meta overview of this. So I'm sharing my screen on some of the older work on Shredder. This was like 20, what is this? Where are we at? Like 2020 or something? But we 3D printed these belts and gear downs that were actually pretty impressive. So you can get to um, high torque uh, using just 3D printed parts, including 3D printed bearings, which is amazing. And then we went to, this is like, okay, your desktop kind of a scale, but what if you talk about industrial grade shredding? Then you gotta go to hydraulic motors like we use on our tractor, which were more like, let me see if I can just get you some pictures there real quick from, that was in uh, 2020 in the summer. Uh, I just wanna scroll th through two there. Like um, some of the stuff we did on a 3D printer, so this is like the 18 inch bed scale. So we were thinking, okay, we gotta start printing our own, uh, making our own filament because then the prints get so big that uh, it gets really expensive. So we said, okay, let's take the hydraulic motor wheels, uh, like the same, same, <laughs> same uh, hydraulic motors as we have on these wheels and do something that looks more like um, industrial grade shredder which was from the summer of extreme design build 2020 uh which is i want to show you some pictures we never finished it but we were i just want to show you a picture of what what kind of scale we were looking at so this is the summer um this is some of the summer this is where the summer starts where we're building the the house the first CD, well that was the cd home too then we got into the machines part where the industrial grade shredder well, take a look at this. That's that's a tra tractor kind of a thing that we were building with that same hydraulic motor. But that same hydraulic motor, because you see this product ecology where we use those motors in many applications. But one of them was I'm gonna something that looks like this. This is our shredder. How how much can this shred? So this is the actual drive. You're talking about about 10 x of the precious plastic shredders. Um, and we were going for an industrial grade one that can be powered with up to 80 horsepower. Uh, so we started on that. Um, here, let me just show you, just, just to finish that discussion before interject. But as far as we got there, we got to, let's see, any more pictures on that? Um, this was the house finishing. I'm not sure I have any more pictures outside of a little titillation there, which shows that no i'm not sure we took any more pictures than that we actually cut some blades for that shredder with the cnc torch table like here actually here yeah those are the kind of blades we cut out that's just a profile of that blade from freecad um but that's the torch table we use to actually cut out those blades 
so we did another prototype of the, that. But yeah, I don't have much on the shredder except that these were the hydraulic motors we used. And uh, <laughs> as you can see, that's that's hundred weight chain, and that's pretty heavy. Anyway, I'll quit at that because we didn't, we never did finish that um, that shredder. But the idea there is that's the equivalent of the kind of shredder from precious plastic that we were thinking about. Okay, well, well let's scale that for when we actually got to uh, get enough material for an entire house. This is what it would look like. Okay. Um, Which is common, common ground. ground. It's uh, yes. the shredder infra infrastructure. That, that would be a great piece of common ground. Uh, so we're, we we came to an hour already. So maybe we can we can fin start finishing up. But I mean, the point is that what you what I showed you is just like a rundown of just a few of the things we're doing. And of course, there's a whole history of, of this, and you can start by. Um, Maybe review some of the links I sent you and maybe pick one and say, okay, let's dive into this. Because okay. each one of them is, you know, a year Yeah, now we're <laughs> Yeah. Um, I think I, I remember what I was going to mention. At work, I work at uh, ConAgra Brands, and sometimes they have different versions of motors or different versions of uh, PLS, uh, uh, VDF systems, or, sorry. Variable drive? Var variable frequency drives, VFD, yeah. And so anyways, even though it's not the same exact part, it's, def it's, a diff it's a different version, and it can be kind of plug and play. And you, unfortunately, it's for better or for worse, it's industrial grade, so you're kind of locked into certain ways of doing things to an extent. But within like that PLC system, for the most part, it's usually plug and play. I mean, there's a lot of things that are old or outdated, um, but the cool thing about open source with like these public libraries and your developments is there's quite a bit of plug, plug and play that's possible. Um, although I'm sure, as you're aware of, like in a more business setting, you want to have like a finished product and have a completed, uh, encapsulating the completion of a project when you do something that's more marketable. Um, so for me, um, being that I'm working with a few peers and kind of small at the moment on the nonprofit side and by myself mostly on the for-profit side, um, I'm trying to focus on small scale and acknowledge um, works like your own on a small scale of development that I can handle. Um, or WikiHouse, and I'm hoping, like, as I engage online and showcase my developments and develop my repositories referring to that, I can maybe explore further on to the, some of those subcategory libraries um, and see what the next point of the process is. Because I you know, at least for myself, sometimes I bite more than I can chew, and so I'm trying to work on, like, small things that I can make progressive module progressions with or versioning that's something I can handle within a set time period. Um, I know in your workshops, sometimes you have it where you want to do a really cool workshop, but things happen along that process that kind of stifle things, or else um, it, does, it creates a lot of stress maybe with the group. Um, but if you can have a complete project, I know like with your 3D printers, um, I think that's really cool when people can have like a completed product and take home and see where their piece, the puzzle, fits in with like your long-term work. Um, I think it's really awesome that you're doing this industrial grade stuff, but I think for some of the workshops, for some of the people that might not be quite as hardcore, if they can have just a smaller product to take home um, and just develop further with, yeah. with, which a 3D printer is a great example for, then allows them to kind of get a taste, uh, complete a development in a way of helping or maybe working with you further. Yeah. There's a lot of development that can arise from having a 3D printing machine or some other manufacturing type product or focus on. Um, for me, um, like another sub subcategory I want to try to work on is like uh, car chassis. So there's like the open source vehicle. There's the rally fighter. I think there's the Velo car that um, York was working on, as well as uh, I forget the other company organization you referred to in your earlier days. But like with my open house party program, I kind of like to refer to like that as its own module with like the car stuff and just explore the Velo car. Um, I forget the name of the company organization you were originally starting with as well, um, but then there's also uh, the Rally Fighter from, um, I forget that company's name, and Open Source Tabby, but just smaller projects you can do to completion but can be like scaled up at a further workshop later on. So that way you finish a product, people can take something home, but then you can really whet people's appetite for that library that's being developed for a bigger production development. Yeah. Yep. Um, but I'll just slow down because I know you are wanting to run on time and 
I don't want to overwhelm you if you are feeling some burnout from the conversation, but if you're willing to have another interview, I'd love to expand on one of the other subcategories at a later time. Yeah, yeah, let's let's set that up for another time. There's um just to add to the category of cars, look at the frame, the frame model and the work on a MythBuster car by another guy who's an open source fanatic. Uh, take a look at that it's a whole whole story there, but um, yeah. Okay. Yeah, so why don't you uh, take a look at what's what will be most relevant for next time and, and let me know. Okay, sounds good. Um, All right. Well, I, I um, like the discussion that, I mean, you're basically trying to provide the framework. Here's like this whole bigger picture of, of open source product development, which not a lot of people are doing. Like you're one of these rare freaks like myself that, that uh, are actually trying to pursue that in a, in a coherent way. I mean... Manageable as well. Say again? Manageable as well, and I'm going to interject again. Yeah. Uh, a peer of mine was also a bit uh, combative in what I'm doing. Um, they admired what I'm doing with the open source development, yeah. but also, for better or for worse, from an academic standpoint, um, if you give away your knowledge, then you also, in some cases, uh, impede someone's way of living to an extent. Um, and I know that's a very debatable issue because you can debate at both sides to an extent, but it can be a bit of contention in working with people um, when like it kind of erodes from their business model in some ways. So that's not something I want to harp on you on, but I've kind of been harped on myself about that conflict of interest of open source versus like survival making a living of what someone else's business model is on. And when you start doing that, like in the for-profit industry, like say GM and Ford or something else, uh, there can be a bit of tension with that market value or sometimes uh, on an unhealthy version, there's nonprofits competing. Ideally on the healthy version, it's finding common ground and collaborating to create more value, not take away value. Exactly. So, so that's something that uh, I have to recognize because not everyone wants to do open source stuff. And there's some things that I don't necessarily also want to do open source stuff. Um, like, for example, with the for-profit, when I'm taking out a lot of debt or trying to utilize that for my private benefit, because there's a difference between like uh, non-profit rules and for-profit rules. I think a, a big issue for next time, not this time, but next time, is with my nonprofit side, I want to make sure I'm IRS compliant because there's public testing. And so I think one thing I want to talk with you about is um, how you've gone about through the process of like public testing and staying compliant with IRS rules um, and meeting those tests of sorts. Because mm -hmm. my five years is coming up due this year and I have to have a certain level of public funding. I'm finally getting some donations actually as of last year, but I just wanted to kind of garner your past uh, senior experience with um, Staying, in con staying congruent with those de public demands and some of the timeline stuff with IRS or else just in general. And also as a nonprofit, like um, you have your mission, but you want to have improve people's well-being, I'm pretty sure, and leave your own, your own mark. And to some extent, you have to cater to your audience or your um, the people you serve. And uh, for me, just kind of gardening more experience in like how to uh, scope limit who you're going to serve and make sure it's an enjoyable experience or an enjoyable workshop so people want to come back and feel like they're a part of the community and creating um, uh, ongoing value that's sustainable and lasting and makes a lasting impact. Yeah. Because um, there's some of that social dynamics that comes with experience that I'm sure you're a bit more well versed on. So once again, it's not, not, it's not enough time to go over it now but just that was a big issue I know I wanted to have with you when we had our meeting, just some of those nonprofit um, um, rules and just some of your experiences, some of the challenges and struggles um, with that. Yeah. I'll just stop down before I take up too much of your time. Yeah. But otherwise, yeah, I'm good with talking, setting up another meeting, um, and I don't want to take too much advantage of your time. So if you want to close the meeting, we can. So yeah. any last words? Yeah, no, there's a lot to this, um, and the promise of open hardware is still to be delivered. So that's a long path, but we're on it. I think that the way it comes out, we want to show that with the CD Home, you can resolve for many people that, oh, it's actually open, and it makes a lot of money, and it, it makes uh, serves a lot of people. And that's the simplest answer. People start getting into an abundance mindset, which, which no longer is win-lose, but it's win-win, and we show how. Yes, by being transparent I think and open. One thing I might be a bit more differentiated with you on is I'm wanting to more focus on well-being 
Um, so for me, like I acknowledge like your libraries. Oop, I only got ten more minutes left. Um, it's acknowledging your libraries with yours and Wikihouse, for example, for affordable housing and kind of exploring that regards. So things that serves, um, like with your server, um, having the design of the public domain, people like myself can reference that in improving their own well-being and meeting their own basic needs. And so that's something that's a bit more, a little divergent to focusing solely on open source hardware, but your hardware definitely serves a purpose. Um, and that's what I really enjoy about it because it helps me and myself uh, for peace of mind in building my own home estate. Um, and I'm running out of time, so. Any other last words, or do you want to? Yeah, well, let's call it that. There's, there's a whole discussion about that point, so save it for the future. Sounds good. All right, well, you enjoy your weekend, what's left of it, Martian. Mm -hmm. And thanks again for the interview. And if you could just send me um, this video recording on the mega file I, link I sent you. Okay. And I'll post it, and you're free to post this. You have my consent to post this on your site. And yep. it's for an enjoyable interview. I appreciate your time. Thanks, Chaz. Keep going. Thanks. Talk next time. Yes, take Bye. care. Bye.